Well, here we are. At, uh, we're going to talk about the Mornington Peninsula Football League round one, particularly the uh, Chelsea game post-match review. Chelsea versus, versus EFL Aspendale, Edie Asp. And uh, Barry Peatman is going to review uh, the game for us. Morning, Barry. Good afternoon, Collins. As a matter of fact, in the afternoon. Uh, Sometimes I get confused. But well, anyway. it, is, it is afternoon. Yeah, it's like daylight anyway. Yeah. A bit grey, but uh, we're mm. going to talk about the game that just happened on the weekend, um, Chelsea particularly, and they had a good win. What was the weather like on, on that day? Colin here, thanks for that introduction here. It was a very nice day, the first probably three quarters, very hot and sunny. I was over there with a pair of shorts on and a short sleeve jumper. That 27. It was a very warm day, a lovely day for football. You can't play football, if you couldn't play football last Saturday, there's something wrong with you. What happened? The weather, weather does. Well, it stay. turned. It turned at uh, the three-quarter time that the wind started to turn around and started raining. It got very cold, and I was very cold. As a matter of fact, it must look like a, looked like a little frozen little tapping out there. I tell you, but it's, well, well, we'll touch on the weather a little bit later. How it affected the game, but what was mm -hmm. the crowd like? Probably the biggest crowd I reckon I've seen at Chelsea for the last since I've been following. I reckon so. It should be because there's only one game on, Colin. Which is a bit stupid. Okay, so, yeah, okay. Estimate, a crowd estimate? You know? oh, I reckon it would probably, uh, oh, I don't know, it wouldn't be, not about the thousands, probably, uh, uh, could, be, could, have, could have been a thousand now, I reckon. Okay. Now, you just wanted to have, make a few words about uh, the new captain this year. Yes, I'm just glad you mentioned that, Colin, that uh, Anthony Lewis, a very good friend of mine, I've been sort of looking after him the last few years. He, uh, it was well-deserved, appointment to be captain this year. I thought he might have been captain two or three years ago, but uh, he's been very true and loyal to Chelsea, this little fellow. He's had a few offers, I told you one last year sometime, that uh, had a few offers to go other clubs. He stick, stuck fat with Chelsea. And he's very, very good. And, uh, and he did play well too. He stuck to Chelsea and uh, rewarded him with captaincy. Yep. Let's have a look at the um, just the first half, half highlights. Um, I'll tell you, the, the quarter time scores was 4-4 four, four to Chelsea, 1-2 uh, to Edie Asp and then by half time it was Chelsea 5-6 to Edie Asp to come back 3-7. Uh, First quarter, Colin, that was a pretty even sort of game. It was a battle of defences but they had uh, Patrick Poor, the big ruckman in the loose man down in the forward pocket, in the back pocket I mean. Took a half a dozen marks. But it took a while to score with Chelsea but they finished up scoring about four goals, something to about might have been one goal, I'm not sure, but uh, pretty, it was pretty even, pretty boring sort of first quarter because a lot of negative football going on. A bit tight, they were probably just uh, feeling each other out early in the season. Now, um, up to half time or three quarter time, Chelsea um, uh, kicked ahead 9 11 to uh, 4 7, and then Chelsea finally at the end of the game 13 14 uh, to EDS 5 8. A very big victory. Second quarter, Colin, the. the Edifel had the wind. It's a pretty good breeze too. It was uh, down the Catherine Avenue end. Yep. Uh, Chelsea led by you know, Nigel Carmody, Carmody in the back pocket, not in the back, in the back line. It was dominating. It was giving a lot of dashing, a lot of dashing clearances, and he was playing very well. Uh, we held him down to about three goals at uh, half time. We, we scored two goals, which is pretty good against the wind. But by half time, the game was starting and. Uh, well, just starting to get a little bit on top at, at half time. Very good. And um, then uh, they finished the game really well. Who are the goal kickers? Tell us the goal kickers. Well, I think, uh, what's, I don't think, I think, I'm pretty sure that that paper, today in the paper, they said the, that... The leader, the Mordial. The Mordial, well, they call themselves, they, uh, they Stuffed said... Stuffed it up. They could, they didn't have Adam Anson kicking any goals at all. They kicked two brilliant goals. And of course, I think Chrissy Warner kicked four goals, had him three in the paper, but... That fellow right in that paper once you get his mind right. But in the third quarter, Colin, that uh, Chelsea sort of started to dominate. They, Patrick Poor, he, Jason Chetler, I mentioned this, Jason Chetler made a very good move putting this Nathan, uh, what's his name, Johnson, into the ruck. Him and Jack Gaze nullified Patrick Poor in the third quarter and he, he run him out the game. And that's when they got to start to get on top. But three quarter time, they were about six or seven goals in front. And of course, the wind changed, the rain came. And then, the, well, the Chelsea just got on top. They just they scored two or three goals, quick goals in the last quarter against the wind. Mm -hmm. it was, there was a bit of a slide into the wind, but and they sort of dropped their bundle. Patrick Poor dropped right out of the game, the big ruckman. And that's when Jack Gaze, 
played a very good game, Colin. He's going to be a very good footballer. So he's only 18. That's right. six foot eight or something. Yep, very good. Now just give us the best player, starting with um, who would who would give the votes to um, the f one vote. Well, I give one vote to Anthony Lewis, who played a good captain's game, very good. Well, solid. The only thing wrong with his game on Saturday, Colin, he, he kicked badly, kicked three or four points, which is not his generally go. He generally kicks, he's really pretty good kicking goals. Got a nice, but he, he's, but apart from that, he played a very good Let game. down slightly. Yeah. Okay, so uh, two votes. Uh, Nigel Carmody held the back line together all, all the afternoon. He would play the top game. And him and uh, Nizer, who yeah. actually kicked two goals in the forward line, but he was nullifying one of the Manning brothers. So he was... He sort of stepped up his game now, no, I don't think he's going to be a good footballer. Of course, three votes. Three votes number right. six, the next coach last year was Stephen Harrison. Played a top game. He is a very, very good footballer, Colin. He's uh, smart, he's clever, he's tough, takes a very good mark, and he likes kicking a goal. But he was outstanding. Very good. And just, uh, was there any... So uh, I mentioned Adam Anderson, too. Adam Anderson, yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, and Nizer, too. He played a good game. And it was a pretty good all-round uh, performance by Chelsea. They sort of a great team effort. Did anyone stand out for EDA? Oh, yeah, Mannix, Stephen Mannix, number fourteen. Uh, Patrick Paul in the first, Patrick Paul in the first half played very well, but he died out, got worn down. Uh, Brent Bowden, number seventeen, he played a fair game. He's a very good marker, that fella, good footballer. But overall, Chelsea was too good, too strong, and too fast. Okay, so what's their hopes for the the future this year? Well, they got a two or three week break, would you believe? I cannot believe this. One game they played, next time they play in three weeks' time. Well, I would think the other sides around in, other co in the competition now would be sort of a bit wary about Chelsea now because Edith Vale Aspendale last year was a very good side. And they haven't lost any players. And I think that uh, they'll be all start starting to think about Chelsea from now on because they, they put a bit of stamp and they've got a couple of fellas to come back in too. So I reckon they'll... Uh, we're in for a good season. I said it was a couple of weeks ago. We, I said I'd be very disappointed if they don't make the top three. Very good. Now, um, special treat for the uh, the viewers at uh, after every home game Monday or Thursday. What are you going to do? Yeah, every uh, well, I might do the Seaford game because that's in three weeks' time. That's just down the road, and I might yeah. do the Seaford and the Bond Bridge. But the other games, uh, the home games mainly, probably will do one on uh, do a, a round up on Monday or Tuesday after the game of the local home games. Excellent. So the viewers out there will be have a, get a bit of an insight what's going on and uh, fill them in what's going on about Chelsea, how they're going. Very good. Well, that's goodbye from me. And it's good five, goodbye from me and uh, thanks for all the viewers out there. Hope you enjoyed it.